Awesome. We are live, folks. Take a look. Looks like we're getting some participants. We're going to give everyone a little bit of time to get uh, get on here. I don't know about you guys, but we've been getting a lot of rain, probably remnants of that terrible storm down south. Yeah, we got the same. Yeah, Mike, we get hit night. Mike, I forgot. Where are you? Which where, where are you based out of? Uh, just uh, southern Arizona. Listen, north of Tucson. Okay. So you guys got affected there too? We've been getting monsoons like crazy. This is our rainy month. So July and August, really good for us for weather because we need we need it. We're in a drought. <laughs> I used to live in uh, Arizona. We'll have to chat about that sometime. So. Yeah. And Fahad, uh, as you know, I'm in Seattle and it's fall, so <laughs> starting. So it's fall, typical Seattle weather here now. Yeah, but you guys have had a pleasant summer, so you've been really lucky. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Awesome. We're one minute past, and so I think it's a good time to get started. And um, this session will be recorded, so uh, you know if anyone misses anything here in the beginning, you'll be able to catch up um, with the, the follow up recording. So, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for coming here to see our two companies, Cumulo and A Tempo, come together to talk about how we deliver and fulfill the promise of hyperscale. Uh, let me just real quickly jump into our agenda for today. So I want to introduce uh, some folks. We're going to have two wonderful people. I'll, I'll introduce them on the next slide uh, in our panel. That will help uh, lead some of this conversation. We'll learn a lot about the A Tempo company and product and their pillars. And then we'll jump into, you know, Cumulo and why Cumulo is fantastic to, for, for moving to the cloud. And it's particularly around migration to the cloud. Uh, we'll uh, then actually let you see the proof in the pudding and do a demo video and we'll wrap it up with a couple of questions and, you know, sort of a panelist discussion here. And then, um, and then uh, I'd love to answer any questions everyone, anyone will have after the fact. So please do us a favor, make sure you get the questions into the chat and we'll, uh, we'll address them right at the end. And if we don't address any, we'll make sure to follow up with you afterwards or just distribute the FA, you know, an FAQ with questions that were left outstanding. So with that said, I want to introduce, uh, I'll start with myself. My name is Fahad Qureshi. I run cloud sales here at Cumulo. I've been here almost seven years and absolutely love this company and, um, you know, been, been excited about what we've been able to grow over the last seven years and, uh, and partnering with vendors like uh, A-Temple. You'll get to hear about them today. I got my buddy Gokul Kuparaj on the phone and Gokul, um, we were able to bribe him away from AWS after a long stint there and he's been a fantastic addition to the team. Gokul, how the heck are you, buddy? Hey, Fahad. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm doing great. Uh, I mean, very excited to be here to, you know, doing this webinar with you and Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, a cloud solutions architect with Cumulo. And uh, just to give me, uh, give you some background, like uh, I have over a decade of experience in uh, IT. Uh, and prior to Cumulo, Cumulo uh, I was with AWS for over seven years in various roles. Uh, and during my tenure, I had an opportunity to be part of helping customers with several large migrations. So I'm very happy here to, you know, share my thoughts on cloud migrations and Cumulo. Outstanding, Goku. We're glad to have you here, buddy. Um, and I'll also like to introduce Mike Oakes, who's a sales engineer at A-Tempo. Mike and I have had uh, the privilege of working together for the past four years. And uh, Mike, just glad to have you here, man. Uh, thanks for joining the party. <laughs> Hey, hey, thanks. For I'm super excited to be here to discuss how, you know, Tempo and Cumulo, you know, can enable our partners to use hybrid clouds. But um, real quick, I'd like to maybe introduce myself and a little bit about Tempo, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So as Fahad mentioned, Mike Oaks, I'm a senior solutions architect with Tempo. Been in the industry 30, 35 years now, kind of date myself there um, in various markets in the storage data protection industry. So a little bit about a tempo and who we are. So we've been around, as you can see by the slide, a 27 year veteran in the industry and in specializing in data preservation, protection, management, movement, and analytics. And we do this through a variety of products. And the one we're gonna be talking about today here is actually our Miria suite of products. And Miria is a software platform that enables heterogeneous workflows utilizing basically dissimilar homogeneous architectures of technology with some native tools that we've developed. You can see a couple of them here, like at the 12 o'clock and the six o'clock position, Miri for backup, Miri for archiving. These are, these are two other pillars within the Miri portfolio. This is what we've been doing now for 27 plus years. So tried, true, battle tested. 
The other two that you're looking at, the big one we're going to talk about is at three o'clock today. This is how we in Cumulo can get your data to the cloud from some type of on-prem storage, dissimilar architectures, doesn't matter. The other one that's of important here is mirror, important, sorry, for mirror for data moving. Think of this one as, you know, synchronization replication. Why is this important? Think DR, business continuity, right? Those, those other aspects that you can all do within one tool. That's just, you know, who we are real quick in a brief overview. So thanks for how to let me do that. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I love the fact that uh, you're able to come on and tell us because, you know, it's not just something that's been new. We've actually proven this with a tempo over the last, you know, several years and have several customers that have been able to either take advantage of, hey, let's take our data off a primary system and move it to another system, or, hey, we'd like to go and move that data to the public cloud. Right. So it's just, just great to, to be able to have, you know, uh, some expertise with you in the field and customer references to do such. But um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Cumulo and cloud migration today. So first of all, you know, uh, you know, Cumulo delivers a solution. Cumulo is a software data platform, and that software data platform extends into your data center and into the public cloud. It's the exact same. Um, uh, it's the same code in both places, right? So it was written to be very flexible and very portable. And what we're talking about today is Cloud Q. Now we hear from customers all the time that Fahad, uh, my organization has made a directional strategy that we want to move our data to the public cloud. And uh, we are going to rely on the vendor of choice, whether that's AWS, Azure, Google, it could be all of them for that matter, it could be two of them, right? Um, but we're gonna rely on these companies to help drive our innovation and our strategy and, and work together with them. But boy, is getting that data over a pain. I mean, it's really, really difficult, right? And so you're talking about moving sometimes massive amounts of data. You're talking about moving large number of files. You're talking about high compute workloads. You're talking about sometimes archive or, you know, workloads that just are static data, don't require a ton of, you know, a performance, but they all want that same experience that they get on premises is in the data centers that I need to be able to get fast access. It needs to be scalable. It needs to give me real time visibility. And so like, what do I do? And that's where Cumulo comes in. Cumulo delivers a single namespace that can scale to multiple petabytes, right? Give you multi-protocol performance. So it doesn't break anything that you currently do today with NFS and SMB. So you don't have to refactor your applications. You don't need to rewrite your workflows. It's simply the same experience that you have in the data center uh, um, and you get it in the public cloud. And you can take advantage of these hyperscalers and their global cloud region. So you retain control and data sovereignty, right? And once that data is in the public cloud, you can take complete advantage of their awesome services, whether they're AI, ML tools or et cetera, right? There's just so much that the cloud services offer, but whether you're on a chemo on premise today, or you're on a disparate system and you wanna get your, you wanna get to the public cloud, Cumulo and A-Tempo have a fantastic solution and a, you know, and a way that we've done it today and proven um, you know, references to go ahead and get you get you doing that, right? Like you, you, you sit there and you strategize how I'm gonna get that data over. We make it simple. It's just the same experience, right? And you can get started today. Now, another use case that we hear about, a little different than migration, but a little bit on the same sense is that, you know, my organization really wants to to get out of the data center, right? Uh, we, we need hybrid cloud. We need a, a presence in the data center for mission critical workloads, but we wanna start moving some stuff over that's you know less mission critical, but very important to the nature of the business for business con continuity purposes, right? For data protection. Um, so we call it uh, DR in the cloud, right? And essentially what it does is that, hey, I, I've made infrastructure investments in my data center, and I want to be able to move those data sets to the public cloud so i'm not sitting there you know think about a, a, a secondary site you you make a significant investment in in real estate whether that's colo whether that's your own data center then you talk about rack space then you talk about populating those racks with servers then you talk about cabling and networking you have to consider power and cooling uh, environmental things of that nature not to mention software licenses you got to pay for vms and other software expenses and then the burden so you have this multi-million dollar investment in a secondary site or a tertiary site that really is there for a, to, to help you in a DR event. But what if we were able to take that and help you move that data to one of the hyperscalers, right? And do it in a very cost-effective way. And oh, by the way, because there's so much flexibility in what uh, the infrastructure that's offered by the hyperscalers, 
if you were to have a DR event and you needed to make this passive site an active site, you can simply beef up all your compute instances and really get a, and get to a place where you can get through those difficult DR moments, whether that's hours, whether that's a day, maybe whether that's a week, right? And be able to serve your primary data sets off, off of a system with Kimo in the in the in the public cloud. So again. You know, eliminating redundant infrastructure, bringing yourself in closer to to the data, uh, I think it's or bringing your data closer to the native services of your hyperscaler, leveraging their uh, multiple locations for geographic, you know, uh, in, in cloud replication, whether it's within their uh, within multiple availability zones or different uh, or different regions, or if it's like you want to be able to work with multiple clouds, we do have customers today that have a certain subset of workload that sits in in one hyperscaler and then they replicate that to another hyperscaler but because you're talking the same way Kimo and, and a tempo can help you deliver that and i mentioned you know your dr now has a value to you right because now you have brought it closer to the hyperscalers so now you can take advantage of all the native services that they have to offer be able to do more with your dr data and more importantly than anything, with Kimo, you get exactly which that same experience that our on-premises customers experience today. You get instant insight into your data. Who's using that data? How many IOPS? Is it um, you know who's my top offender? What directories are filling up? Which departments? You can you can now use those analytics to build charge back and show back reports. In some cases, you could even do things like shame back, but we don't we don't want to encourage that behavior. But point is. This is all that you get with Cumulo, uh, whether you're migrating to the cloud with a tempo in Cumulo, or whether we can offer you to get off your disparate systems into the cloud at scale, single namespace, multi protocol, give you the exact same experience. Cumulo and a tempo can deliver that for you. But don't take our word for it. I want to turn it over to uh, Gokul Kuparaj here. And so Gokul's going to set the stage a little bit about what you're going to see here in a demo, and then uh, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll walk you through and show it to you in action. What do you say, Gokul? Sure, Fahad, ready for it. Yeah, just before uh, you know, I play the demo for you guys, I uh, just wanted to share some context. Uh, so we are going to show you, you know, how to migrate an on-prem NAS system to Cumulo in AWS using Atempo. Um, obviously, like Fahad mentioned, we have uh, support for you know, Azure, GCP, and all. But for this demo, we chose to go with AWS to show you the capabilities. And uh, during this demo, we'll focus on ease of cluster deployment in Cumulo in AWS and how migration is actually done using a tempo uh, and also how you can use uh, some built-in analytics capabilities that Cumulo provides to look at some key metrics during the migration. Uh, with that said, uh, Fahad, we can start playing the demo. That's fantastic. Hi, everyone. Let's look at how easy it is to deploy Cumulo cluster in AWS. We have several ways of doing it, but the most popular ones being using AWS CloudFormation service, which is infrastructure as a code service from AWS. And the other popular one would be to use Terraform, which is open source. In this demo, we will use the CloudFormation templates provided by Cumulo. As you can see, uh, you can get to the GitHub page with the above URL here. And uh, this will take you to the page which hosts all the code, documentation, etc. If you scroll through, you will see the infrastructure that gets deployed as a part of this CloudFormation template. First, you need to click on this code and download the zip. It will download the files into your uh, local machine. All you need to do is unzip it and uh, upload the folder into an S3 bucket. In my example, I navigate to AWS Management Console, go to Buckets, and um, I have a bucket in place, and I just drag and drop the resulting folder from the unzipped file. And that is this one. As you can see, all the uh, related assets here match with what's there in the GitHub page. Next, I'm going to navigate to AWS CloudFormation service. Once this gets loaded, I'm going to create stack. Make sure these options are selected and I'm going to provide the S3 URL. 
in order to do that go back to the um, folder where you uploaded the uh, assets and click on this yaml file and then copy the object url then go back to cloud formation and paste the url click on next now I'm gonna fill out all the required parameters. As you can see, I have filled out the required parameters here. On a high level, you need to provide things like the CloudFormation stack name, AWS configuration, like the VPC subnet IDs um, and optional parameters, as well as Cumulo specific configuration on what size you need the cluster to be deployed, etc. After that, you need to click on next. You can optionally provide keys. Go to stack create options and disable rollback on failure so that if there is any failures, you can look at it. Make sure all the settings are desired here then click on these two checkboxes and create stack. Okay, so after about 10 minutes, my stack is complete. As you can see here, the create complete. If you go to events, you will see all the related stack that gets deployed, which are nested stacks as well as the time it took. For my stack, it started at 10.24, was complete at 10.33 here, about 10 minutes. Then I go to outputs and choose this public IP in order to access the Cumulo cluster. Please note that I chose the public IP management option in the cloud formation to true so that I can go to the Cumulo cluster using a public IP. Typically in production use cases, you won't choose that option. So you manage via a private, you know, EC2 instance or over VPN. Okay, as you can see, this is a brand new cluster with no, da no data in it. I'm gonna create um, NFS exports. So Mike, um, our partner at, at Tempo is going to do some migration into this cluster. Please note, you can also create SMB shares and combination of both and um, use it for the migration. Okay, I have created three NFS exports for home, media, and research. And I'm gonna hand it over to Mike to do the migration from on-premises NAS system to the Cumulo cluster in AWS. Today we're here to demonstrate how you can transfer data from on-prem storage to the cloud. More specifically here, we're talking about Cumulo in the cloud. And how do we do it seamlessly and efficiently using a Tempo's mirror for migration? So let's get started real quickly. So what we're doing here today is we have our one gigabit office link for this demonstration. It's connected to our Iceland appliance. This could be some other appliance in our Cumulo in the cloud. And what I've already done is I've installed my software and pre-configured my NAS access points. Now, after that, it's really just a matter of setting up your tasks to start the migration. We have to be using two NFS exports today, but you could be using, as I said, SMB, some other type of file system, all from Miria, all going to Cumulo in the cloud. I've already set up one of our tasks, but we're going to do the other right now to show you how easy it is. What I have up here on the screen, as you can see, is a um, access point going to a web browser, right? So I already have pre-configured everything set up. So we're going to have just going to log in automatically. Now, what you get is when you first log in, you drop right into the migration page when you root. You can already see one of our tasks is running. We're going to go ahead. We're going to start a new project. So we're going to name our project uh, Research One. How's that? Because we're going to actually move some stuff out of our research page. And we'll go ahead and set up a new task real quickly. Now, what you can do right here, it's a pull down. Let's look for our sources, right? So we want to come off our Isilon. We want to go to, as I said, we have a Cumul in the Cloud set up with NFS here. And again, you could have also SMB, as I said earlier, other access points you want to use. Once you bring it up, bring it up, you can start to look at your different locations. I happen to know my data happens to be located in NFS. 
and I want to take everything in research and I actually just want to move it right to this research folder. I simply add that and I can have, I can set multiple relations to move at the same time. This one, we just happen to do one. Real important thing here is exclusions, especially when you're doing things that do snapshotting and other, you can do that here and just tell the tool or the appliance here, I do not want to copy snapshots, right? And I just add that inclusion. And I can delete it, I can add more, I could add temp files, DSS store files, and other things like that. Go ahead and click Next. You'll see here there's multiple modes you can run in. We're going to do Echo. Echo just says move everything from source to target and make sure it all matches. There's no extra files on target that may be already previously there. We can do ours with a snapshot, helps with quicker scans. Our fast scan technology, which allows for the use of the snapshots to build change lists so I don't have to walk file systems after the first seed of data. You can schedule it. We're not going to do that because this is our first seed. I'm going to set up threads, and this is just a number of cores to use on our system. I'm just going to tell it two, two cores, and then I'm going to set parallel jobs. In this case, I'm running on a little nook with 12 cores in it. I'm going to tell it to use six parallel jobs. I'm going to tell it actually run, hey, every five minutes when you're running, fire up a job if you find something needs to be done, or maybe we'll say 100 gigabytes of data or 200, well, let's do it smaller. Let's say 50,000 files. Fire up a job, one of those sub jobs I'm setting right here, and start moving data. So that you get to move data in parallel while you're still looking for data. Copy mode will keep as the default to move everything. Hash checking, you can set up hash checking both from a, a block level and a file level. If you set any of these here, you'll do a file level migration and a check of the data, the hash that you've selected. Go ahead and we'll hit next. It says, hey, do you really want to set it up as sync as uh, echo? I say yes. Then just give it a name. I'll give it, uh, maybe we'll do what? Research, how's it? Research one, you think? If I could type research one. And then we'll just say new task. And then we're done. We'll just say back. So our new task has been created here, but it hasn't been started. So what we'll do now is I can, if I had multiple tasks, I could go in here and tell it to start all tasks, right? I can start tasks in test mode. I'm actually just going to click on the task. And right from here, I'm going to tell it to launch it. Right? And we can, and you can launch it from an integrity check as well. But I'm just going to tell it, hey, launch my task. Once you've done that, a few seconds, it's going to start to spin up. We'll start to run. We'll go back to the main page here for a second for migration. You see the task, it's going to give it a second here. It'll spin up. It's starting to run. It's already found 14 megs worth of data it wants to move. You can actually watch it from here. This screen will show you volume per day or objects per day. Or you can take a look in the activity log. You'll see some stuff we already have running. Tasks, there's two tasks that are running now. I can drill into them. I could take a look at what's going, these synchronization jobs which are running from each. It'll tell you the speed it's running. This one hasn't started up yet. It will shortly because we just started at 11.53, you'll see. And it's finding different jobs to run that meet some of those criteria of files and or size. Time obviously hasn't been reached. But you can go through and, and actually look on each one of these as they're running. You can click off here, get details of a task, how much it thinks it's going to run. This one happens to 150,000 files and a thousand directories. So you can start to look at what's running and get some idea on how long things are gonna take. And that's really it. Once you've got this running and you see how simple it was, now it's just a matter of executing simultaneous jobs after, I should say incremental jobs, by scheduling them after this first seed is finished and you have your data easily moved up to the Cumulo Cloud. Thanks for your attention. Have a great day. Okay, now that you have seen Mike from Atempo demonstrate how to migrate from on-prem NAS systems like Isilon to Cumulo cluster running in AWS. I want to wrap this by showing how it looks like in you know Cumulo in AWS. As you can see, I logged into the dashboard of Cumulo, uh, and uh, you see the data is now at um, there is 542 gigabytes of data approximately and uh, we have migrated close to 
ADD to 1000 files across 52K directories. Obviously in the background, we ran multiple jobs um, to different directories to pull in more data. Um, and one of the things I wanna show you here is the, the value that Cumulo provides in terms of rich analytics capabilities. Um, it is not only you know, useful to understand what data you have in terms of you know, directories, files, uh, what kind of files uh, and have the deep insights into the data that you store. But it's also useful in migration where you can see uh, that, uh, you know, I had migrated around, uh, we completed this migration around like, you know, 4 p.m. or so. So I can go into this historic data here and you can see uh, the cluster activity or performance, right, in terms of IOPS, throughput and latency uh, during this migration. Um, and additionally, there is more uh, activity you can see, like, um, you know, how many clients are connected at any point in time, uh, what is the directory changes, uh, and many, many more. Uh, in terms of data itself, right, you can go to this Capacity Explorer and you can see that we primarily migrated home, media, and research data. And if you scroll over, you can see that it migrated with the permissions, of course. Uh, as well as you can dig deeper in Cumulo side as to what the data is inside those uh, particular folders or shares. Um, thank you. So in summary, during this demo, we looked at how easy it is to spin up a Cumulo cluster in AWS. And you saw how to migrate large file system uh, from on-premise systems to Cumulo uh, in the cloud and some of the Cumulus rich analytics capabilities uh, to augment and um, get insights into the migration and the file system that you have. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. That was a great demo. Great job, Gokul and Mike. Really, uh, really appreciate that. And I think you kind of capped it off right at the end, Gokul, was that, you know, uh, it's it's simple to get set up in AWS with Cumulo. And then look how easy it was in terms of a user interface experience with the A Tempo product, right? Like it, it, it's very simple. You get uh, great resources to help you with it on their side as well. But it's just, just, it's really clear there's three different ways to operate with it. And that was fantastic. I'd love to um, I have a couple of questions that I want to kind of pose to the both of you. And since you uh, are on our panelists today, let's uh, let's uh, let's ask a couple of questions. So I'm going to start with you, Gokul. So, you know, you you've obviously had some experience working with AWS, and you've um, you you probably helped a lot of customers over that period of time. You've been with Cumulo here uh, for for a little over six months. Tell us about your experiences with cloud migration. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so. In terms of migrations, right, as you pointed out, it's not an easy task, right? Uh, and there is a lot of planning that is required upfront to be really able to pull off a successful migration. Uh, and some of the key things, you know, I, I would say that, you know, a customer should consider are, you know, doing assessments to their portfolio, right? Understanding what they have, right? And then deciding the right strategy to migrate an application, whether it's, you know, rehost, lift and shift, refactor, et cetera. Um, and also the other main important factor would be to use the right tools and services that are proven in the cloud for your enterprise. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, Cumulo and Atempo solution can really help in terms of the, if you want to rehost or lift and shift your application, like uh, NAS systems to AWS or clouds, uh, as well as, you know, using the right uh, tool so that, you know, uh, on those complex migrations, like, so uh, using tools like Atempo to successfully do this. That's awesome. Mike, let me throw it over to you. I mean, you've, you've talked about your company's 27 year experience in data preservation. You've been, you've only had 30 or 35 years of experience yourself. So you don't have much to, to, to back it up with, but like, tell us about your experiences with cloud migration. And I think Gokul hit on some important points or one of them is that, that portability piece, right? So whether it's a NAS, whatever type of NAS, SMB, NFS, 
the ability to come off some type of file system, right? Being able to take on-prem cloud, public or private, and push it to something else. That's important. But couple that with, and this is the big one, because we're in a 7x24, 365 environment space, right? Everybody needs to have everything immediately. So being able to do those migrations to the Cumulo Cloud without impacting user experience or the workflow itself right, is really, really critical. And I've seen some appliances can do it and some can't. And this is where you need to start taking a look in the planning phase that Google's talking about, really understanding what the appliance you're gonna to start to use for this. Absolutely. And then, you know, oh, it's a, a shameless plug for Cumulo is that, you know, there's not that many companies that can give you a single namespace, multi-protocol and multi-petabyte, right? So if you're looking to move data at volume, at velocity, and and you're the perfect tool with a tempo in the middle to do that. I, ju I just think there's a story here that, you know, if you're ready to make that that shift, you know, we can we can help you with that. I have another question for you, and I'm going to go with you, Mike, first. So, Mike, you know, you, you know, you've you've been with a Tempo for a long time. You've actually worked with a lot of legacy file systems. You know, um, tell me, how do you think Cumulo compares, uh, and you know, how to the others? And then, you know, you know, as an as a Tempo, as your software client, like, how, well, why is it fun to work with us? Why does it? Why is it good? So I'm, I'm going to go back. So we we call what's happening now in the world right? past couple years, like it's a data tsunami. It's an explosion of data, right? Mm -hmm. And people have to get off some older legacy storage, whatever it happens to be, right? But it's they need to get something bigger, better, faster, smarter. And this is where I think Cumula really shines, right? It's the analytics portion. I mean, it's a great product for speed and everything else, but the analytics is where they really stand up against others. Being able to look at that information in real time as Gokul showed in the demo, drilling down into directories, drilling down into files, what's hot, what's not, while not impacting that user experience I'm talking about, so you can do both. That's really critical. And I think that's where Cumulo is a step above some of the others. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much, Mike. Gokul, what about yourself? Not being biased, of course. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, like, uh, you know, I've worked with several products uh, in, in the cloud and et cetera, right? So, uh, so I believe that definitely, you know, there is uh, file storage products out there in market today, uh, including some ones which which are from cloud vendors themselves, right? Uh, which we call native services. But uh, I would say, you know, they all provide you know decent performance uh, and scale for the storage, but mostly it's with single protocol. There are some with multi-protocol, but I would say in my opinion, none of them provides the you know scale, high performance and multi-protocol support all in a single namespace. And Cumulo does that along with the rich capabilities of analytics that you know Mike pointed out uh, with the simplicity. So with all that, you know, it's just unseen in market today. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have one more question for both of you, and this one's important to my heart. It's close to me. So the importance of hybrid cloud. So Mike, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with you. Why, why we hear the term hybrid cloud, cloud everywhere. Um, everybody talks about it. Why is it important? Well, it's important from a couple aspects and I'll just delve in one or two, but we, I think you hit on earlier in your presentation, right? It's, it's also, it's about security. And so when I mean security, I mean security for an organization, right? Business continuity, disaster recovery. Yes, you're running on-prem, but if you have something in the cloud and you need to get to it because something happens on-prem, you lose a facility, a network, whatever, you're not down, right? Again, I go back to that 7 by 24, 365 environment we live in. Everybody wants, you know, seven, eight, nine uptime. And this is where the cloud or partner using the cloud, especially Cumulo in the cloud, allows you to maintain that, allows you to be confident your DR, your business continuity solution is going to be there when you need it. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Gokul, you came from AWS, so you, and then you came to work for a company like Cumulo. So naturally hybrid cloud is, is, uh, is important to you. Tell us, tell us your perspective. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like you said, you know, it's, it's mostly a lot of places we see hybrid you know, cloud terminology. So I just want to, you know, uh, first mention my uh, definition of it. So in my definition, you know, hybrid cloud means, you know, organizations leverage both on-premises, which is private cloud, uh, or at least some sort of, you know, edge uh, computing, right, uh, in, in the on-site, uh, as well as a public cloud. Uh, so based on my experience, uh, this is the most common model we see enterprise customers leverage, uh, except those born in the cloud customers. So people would ask like, why not move everything to the cloud, right? Uh, so, well, it's easier said than done because the main drivers I see for hybrid cloud is 
a uh, lot of use cases like, like local residency requirements, compliance, ultra low latency, uh, legacy applications that cannot be moved to the cloud. So there are things like that. So that's why I believe like having a file storage product like Cumulo that is truly software defined and being able to behave exactly same across on-prem as well as in the cloud is a true differentiator. And that's why I think uh, our customers should definitely look into and take advantage of it. Yeah. And it goes back to our, our opening statement is fulfilling the promise of hyper, you know, hyperscale, right? And, and doing it. Why this is really important to me is that as, as a Cumulon for seven years, I've, I've brought on a lot of customers onto our journey and brought them into the world and, and they were using Cumulo in the data center, but they've always told me that our directional strategy long-term is to get some of this data over to the public cloud and how do we do it? And that's why I think, you know, this is my key, my customers are like my family, right? And this is just the next step in the journey. We see the evolution of it. We see in, in the last year with with, um, with the environment, with COVID and things of that nature, the remote work aspect has accelerated. The desire to open up your cloud, um, you know, uh, you know uh, move forward in your cloud strategy, probably maybe a year to five years ahead of schedule, right? And so the journey that we can show from on-premises to the public cloud with the combination of our two companies is pretty awesome. So that's why, again, it's important to me and it's important to my customers. So thank you both for your commentary there. Let's do a quick wrap up. So in conclusion, I want you to leave with this. Cumulo and A-Tempo, moving your data over from your legacy uh, infrastructure in your data center today is, is seamless. It's easy. We don't ask you to refactor your applications. We don't ask you to rewrite your workflows. It is, uh, you can uh, operate in your traditional protocols of NFS and SMB. We don't break anything. In fact, because Cumulo, again, as I, as I led with, is the same software that you see in the data center, is the same software that you see in the public cloud, you get a very similar experience. You get single namespace, multi-protocol, multi scales to petabytes, and, um, and delivers performance to your levels that you need, or you know, we can also bring down that performance if it's not a, a requirement for your workload. Um, and again, it just prevents you from having multiple instances of infrastructure kind of broken out all over the place, talked about high performance and multi-protocol support and the scale, but more importantly, on-demand flexibility. If you were to take advantage of Cumulo for disaster recovery and business continuity, and you had a DR event, you can flip the switch and make that DR system a primary system very simply and be able to go on an active, um, uh, serve active workloads off that in, in, in moments time. So again, seamless, fast, easy, scalable. There's a number of great things here that our two companies can offer for you. So look forward to, uh, to hear from you. We're gonna um, throw a quick plug for uh, a fantastic white paper written by uh, a buddy of ours here. His name is Sean Whalen. He wrote um, the guide to uh, cloud migration, right? With Cumulo. It's 27 pages. It's fantastic read. I encourage you to, to definitely uh, download it and uh, get through the material in your own time. It's uh, It's been one of the most enlightening pieces of material that our customers have given us feedback on, but it just talks about like, how do, you, how do you make that move to the cloud? How do you do it fast? You know, how do you control uh, your expenses, move into OPEX? How do you get predictable expenditure? And then, you know, how you can do this at scale. So start today with small workloads, grow yourself to your, from your least mission critical workloads and, and move towards some of your production workloads as well. So with that said, um, if you have any questions, I don't see any in the chat right now, but if you have any questions, we encourage you to, to uh, send those out to info at cumulo.com. And uh, we'll be happy to turn those around to you as soon as possible. Let me just take one quick look at the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Doesn't seem like we have any questions. So Gokul Mike, any closing thoughts? Well, I, I yeah, I check. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, this is a great uh, information that we are able to share with the customers and, uh, you know, using Cumulo and, uh, you know, Atempo, I think uh, you, you get a great uh, solution for, for lifting and shifting your NAS. So I would definitely, you know, encourage customers to check it out. Yeah, I would agree. If you're looking for two, you know, seamless software products, both Atempo and Cumulo give you that ability to use your on-prem with your cloud. And basically I call it the heterogeneous slash homogeneous workflow. You're putting it all together into one. We, that's what we enable. That's what we try to enable for our customers. Absolutely. And so I thank you both for uh, being on this session with me today and, um, you know, for those of you that are watching this live or are going to watch this over a recording, 
give us a shout and let's at least have a conversation. Let us show you how to do this. Let us show you uh, examples of customers that are doing this today. So with that said, thank you so much for your time and I uh, look forward to hearing from you.